Warning, the video you're about to watch contains mathematics at the level of college algebra and trigonometry. All material has an assumed prerequisite of both Algebra 1, which is elementary algebra, and Algebra 2, which is intermediate algebra. While some prerequisite topics are reviewed briefly, a more thorough review of these entrance topics can be found by searching the web. It's the system of equations. We must deal with them all at once. Always looking for solutions. Positive outlook overcome. Hello and welcome to a video on arc length. When you're watching this video, it, sh it is assumed that you've already seen my videos on um, angles, which is creating angles, angle measures in degrees, angle measures in radians, um, that you have a familiarity with radians, an ability to convert from radians to degrees and degrees to radians, uh, coterminal angles and reference angles. Those are all the videos in this video series that I've uh, recently recorded. Uh, arc length is a nice subtopic here and a really great use of a radian measure. So let's dive into this. Um, it's actually one of the more important topics in trigonometry as well, because it's a basis for uh, the unit circle definition of trig functions. So beginning with a simple definition, arc length. An arc length S, which is very traditional that we use the letter S for arc length. An arc length S is the length of the curve along an arc. So when I say that, it really means that we're looking at a circle and we're measuring the length of an arc along that circle. So it might be like, let's say just that, that arc length right there. And so having done that, we get this little slice, like a slice of pizza or something like that. And we call this length here S, which is the arc length, the length of the arc along a, uh, the length of the curve along an arc. And then, of course, during that cutting out or subtending of that angle, we would call that a subtending of an angle uh, because you're cutting out an angle. The angle that's cut out, we'll call theta there. And while we're at it, we'll go ahead and label the radius of the original circle as R. Now, there is a relationship between all of these. We saw from an earlier video that the radian was defined, a single radian, was defined as the angle necessary to cut out a length of one on a circle of radius one. And then as we worked through those examples, we came across this idea or realized that really the angle is just the ratio of the arc that got cut out to the radius of the circle. And that was kind of the critical definition of a radian or not a radian at that point, that's radian measure, which means it could be more than one radian, right? In fact, what you're looking at right here is likely less than one radian. It's smaller than a single radian angle. And if I failed to mention it in the previous video, a radian, a single radian can be found just by the fact that you know that one radian is the same thing as 180 degrees over pi. And if you had grabbed a calculator just to compute that, I generally don't bother with that idea because I don't want people to uh, approximate. Like I don't want my students to say, oh, well, this is basically a radian. It's, uh, uh, but it is approximately around 57 point three degrees. I just don't want my students to say, oh, 60 degrees is like a radian. It's not. Uh, so, but th that is approximately what a radian is. So then we get into this theorem and it's actually <clears throat> kind of the, excuse me, it's kind of the same idea that we had just mentioned with this formula right here. Uh, the length of the arc S formed by an angle theta measured in radians. That's critical. That radian or sorry, that angle theta that we drew in the previous, um, page that has to be in radians because that's the whole definition of radian measure is theta is equal to arc length divided by radius and if you uh do things in degrees it breaks the entire formula so uh so the, anyway the length of the arc s formed by an angle theta measured in radians and a circle of radius r is given by the following formula and really there's not much to the proof of that because we already know from our previous work that this equation or formula is true. If you multiply both sides by R, you'll get theta times 
R is equal to S or S equals R theta. So it's really not much of a proof. And by the way, I make a little note here. This is why the radian is a unitless measure is because S, this numerator right here, is a length and the radius is also a length. So they're both measured in the same units. So let's say S is measured in meters and so is R. And so the meters would cancel in that fraction and you would have a unitless number. And that's why radians are unitless. They don't have like a degree sign or something like that. They're just five or pi or seven pi over eight or something like that. Now this formula right here is uh, very important for applications. And I have, I, I'm a huge fan of applications in trigonometry specifically. Uh, but most of mathematics, I love applications. And so I have about four applications in this video that we're going to go through. Actually, really, the first two are kind of precursors, and then the last two are applications. So let's get into it. As a precursor, find the arc length, given that you have an angle, theta, which is pi over 3, and a radius, r, which is 12 meters. So I'm going to go ahead and draw this out a little bit. And before I do, I want to make sure, since radian measure is probably brand new to you, I want to make sure that you really truly understand what pi over 3 radians is in terms of degrees. If you already know, then you can kind of skip forward a little bit. But we know that, uh, let's see, pi over 3 radians, uh, it's the same thing as pi over 3 times 1 radian. Okay. And remember, radian is a unitless measure. That's why I'm not really writing a symbol after that. We also know, by the way, that two pi radians, it's a full circle or a full rotation, if you will. And that's the same thing as 360 degrees. And that allows us to solve this equation for whichever uh, unit this is. This is a single radian. So I'm going to go ahead and solve this equation for a single radian. In other words, divide both sides by 2 pi to get what a single radian actually is. And a single radian is 360 degrees over 2 pi, or most people write it this way, 180 over 180 degrees over pi. So that's what I'm going to replace this number one here with. It's going to be pi over 3 again, times 180 degrees over pi. And the pi's cancel beautifully. As I've mentioned in the previous video, radians do not need to actually have pi's in their numbers. It's just that uh, we commonly have them with the nice numbers, but it is not always the case that you'll have like, you know, three pi radians. It could be three. You could have the three as a radian. That's perfectly fine. But in this case, uh, this all reduces down to 60 degrees. So we know that we have a 60 degree angle, although you're not going to use 60 degrees in your computation. Remember, the arc length formula, S equals R theta, that theta must be radians, must be in a radian measure. So uh, I'm not really going to use that 60 degrees. The only reason why I actually brought it up was just so we know when we draw this out, how far we want to draw. Once you get really used to radians, uh, you don't actually need to um, convert to uh, degrees because it's not uh, needed anymore. You're so used to radian angles, but let's go ahead and just carve out a 60 degree angle. There we go, that's pretty good. And uh, we're told that we have this arc along that curve. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn that curve off now. And we have this nice, beautiful arc that I would not be able to draw by hand otherwise. Uh, we're told that this angle, which we just carved out, is pi over 3 radians. And the radius is 12 meters. 12 meters. And we're trying to find this arc length, S. Now, really, I didn't actually have to draw this out, but I just like to do that initially so that people can kind of get on board with the idea. So uh, S is equal to R theta. S is equal to R theta. R here is 12 meters. I'll write it that way. And theta is pi over 3. Remember, radians is unitless. 
three goes into 12 four times. And so this will be four pi meters. Remember the units actually stick around. They don't, they didn't get canceled there. Uh, the radius is in meters and the angle doesn't have units. So there's no units that get canceled. So the meters hang out uh, and this arc length is four pi meters. Now, to be honest with you, that's how you're going to likely answer in a mathematics course because we like exact answers. So four pi meters is how you would answer. But generally to the, to the public, you're not gonna say, oh, you know, the distance to that thing is four pi. You would actually approximate that using a calculator to 12.6 roughly meters. But I'm not gonna write that down because I don't want you uh, to approximate your answers. In this next example, you can see right at the top, the arc length formula requires theta to be in radians. I just wanna keep reminding you of that because they give us an arc length in degrees and that's a, a no-no, we shouldn't do that, right? So let's go ahead and grab this guy right here and I'm just gonna put it right here and we're gonna create an, uh, a curve or an arc of 210 degrees just to see what that looks like. Oops, I went too far and unfortunately it can't back off. So let me do that again. Uh, start here, 210 degrees, right? Well, Good enough, we'll just say this is 210. I, I kind of started at the wrong point. Whoops, oh well, not that big of a deal. We'll just pretend as though that's 210 degrees. All right, now that we have that done, uh, let's see, the radius was told to be three feet. And the angle was told to be 210 degrees, but I can't write 210 degrees here because I need theta to be in radians to do the formula. The formula S equals R theta only works in radians. Uh, again, just to remind you of the reason why is because this formula was derived from theta is equal to, let me zoom into that so I, my ink doesn't go all over the place. It was derived from theta equals S over R. And theta equals S over R is how a radian is actually defined. It's the uh, arc length divided by the radius of the circle. And so that's, since that's a definition of a radian or how radians are derived, uh, that angle must be in radians. All right, so let's convert 210 degrees into radians. So we know that there are two pi radians in a full circle, so we also know there are 360 degrees in a full circle, so those two are the same. We have 210 degrees, which is the same thing as 210 times one degree. So I know that I need to solve this equation for one degree, or in other words, divide both sides by 360, and you'll be left with one degree on one side and two pi over 360 on the other. And most people would write that as pi over 180. So one degree is pi over 180 radians. I'll write that in here, 210 times pi over 180, unitless measure. So I don't have to worry about the word radians or anything like that. And if you try to reduce this down, it will actually, uh, both uh, the tens cancel obviously in the there. And uh, both those numbers are divisible by three. And so you get seven pi, over six, very special angle, seven pi over six. Um, you'll eventually get to know all the special angles in trigonometry. Uh, so seven pi, sorry, not seven sixth, seven pi over six. All right, so what is the arc length? Well, by the formula, arc length is going to be R three, uh, what was it, feet? times theta, which is seven pi over six. Again, unit list there. And this will clean up a little bit to be seven pi or seven halves pi feet. And that is the arc length. Again, that's a good answer. Um, if you ha have an instructor that really wants you to answer, like to approximate an answer or something like that, that's roughly 11 feet. Now I consider these to be our warm up exercises because it's just using a formula without um, really a lot of thought. But now let's go into where we have to actually think about what we're doing. 
The minute hand of a clock is 2.4 centimeters long. How far does the tip of the minute hand travel in 20 minutes? This is an arc length problem. We just need to really go through and kind of draw things out and help ourselves. So let me go ahead and prep by drawing out a little bit. So we're really interested in finding out that red length right there along this clock edge. And we're told that the minute hand, which is the longer hand of the clock, is 2.4 centimeters long. And I could put in the units there, I suppose, 2.4 centimeters on both of those. Uh, and we want to know how far, in other words, what's the arc length that it travels through as it goes through 20 minutes. So our first question to ourselves is what the heck is this angle, right? It's gone through 20 minutes, uh, but that doesn't tell us the degrees, nor does it directly tell us the radian measure. So how do you do that in a problem like this? Well, how many minutes are there in a full rotation? Well, there are 60 minutes in a full rotation, right? That's a full hour. And we've only gone through 20 of those minutes. So in essence, we've gone 20 out of 60, 20 sixtieths of a full rotation. And that would be obviously, if you reduce that number, one third of a full rotation. Well, what is a full rotation? We know a full rotation in degrees is 360 degrees, but in radians, it's a full rotation is two pi. So we've gone through one third of two pi radians. And this time I'm actually writing in the word radians just for no reason, basically. So this angle is just one third of two pi or two pi over three. That's what one third of two pi is. So this is two pi over three radians. And now that I know the radian measure, remember you need to use the arc length formula, you need radian measure. So S equals R theta. We know the radius is 2.4 centimeters. I don't know why I enunciated or pronounced that so well. Uh, times the angle two pi over three radians. And this, because you started with decimals, likely requires us to grab a calculator to do the entire computation. So off on the side here, I am actually grabbing a calculator right now and multiplying everything out. And this is roughly, and very roughly, five point, I'm gonna round to two decimal places. Actually, I should round to one, 5.0 centimeters. The reason why I'm rounding to one is because really the precision they've given us in the original problem is a single decimal place. So I'll keep my answer to a single decimal place as well. So that's about the distance roughly that the uh, minute hand goes through in, in a 20 minute period. Now, obviously I didn't have to stick with 20 minutes. I could have asked uh, 23 minutes. Uh, it'd be the same problem if I had said, well, how far does the minute hand go through in 23 minutes? You would replace this two, with, that's 20, sorry, with a 23. And of course, at that point, it would not reduce down to third, but you would have 23 sixtieths of two pi. And so your angle would be 23 over 60 times two pi, and you could still do the problem. So this is just a heads up that uh, it could be any number of minutes. It doesn't actually matter. Well, I shouldn't say any number. Well, yeah, I could say any number of minutes because you can go beyond two pi as well. So I could say how many, uh, that's actually a good side question. I'm gonna write that down. What about how far the minute hand travels in 98 minutes? So nothing stops us in our S equals R theta formula. Nothing stops us from rotating beyond two pi. In 98 minutes, you rotate beyond a full circle. In fact, you've gone 98 out of 60, uh, 98 out of 60 um, full rotations. So you've gone greater than a full rotation. That's actually more than one and a half rotations, in fact. And that's of a full rotation, so of two pi. So you just take 98 sixtieths of two pi, and that would be your angle. In that case, theta would be 98 sixtieths times two pi. I'm not gonna re reduce that because there's no need to. I'm, I know I'm gonna grab a 
a calculator. So I'll go ahead and say, in that case, the arc length or the distance the minute hand has gone through is, again, it's radius, 2.4 centimeters, times the angle, 98 sixtieths times 2 pi. And again, I, the reason why I didn't reduce that is because I started with a decimal here, and that just tells me that I'm going to use a calculator in the very end to uh, compute my answer. And so that's what I'm kind of doing right here. Divided by 60, 2.4 times 98 times 2 pi divided by 60 is 24.6, rounded to the nearest decimal place. So 24.6 centimeters. And that's the distance, again, the minute hand carves out in 98 minutes. So you could adjust this to be anything, really. And it doesn't have to be a clock either. It could be whatever circular object. So let's do one last application. This is a good astronomical application. So if the sun's distance is approximately 93 million miles from Earth, and if an observer on Earth measures the sun's, the sun's subtended angle to be approximately a half a degree, estimate the sun's diameter to the nearest 10,000 miles. This definitely uh, calls for a picture here. So I'm going to zoom out to give myself a large-ish picture to work with. So what I've drawn here is actually a one degree angle. It's even too large, but let's just pretend as though that, that this works. Now, this is using sort of a little trick uh, in, um, in trigonometry, which is that if you really want to know, we're not actually asking for an arc length here. We're asking for a radius or a, sorry, a diameter of, of, of the sun. We're not asking for an arc. We're asking for an actual line here, but there is a theorem that I'm not going to really truly, uh, have my students memorize or anything like that, but it does make sense. And it goes like this. If R the radius that you're considering here, and in this case, the radius is 90 million miles, um, or 92, 93, uh, if the radius is massive and theta is very small, then the chord length from A to B is approximately the same as the arc length from A to B. Now that may not make sense to you until I draw a small circle. So for this very small circle with not a very large radius and a theta that's kind of large, right? Um, it is not true that the chord connecting these two edges is approximately the same as that arc right here. These are not the same lengths. However, if you look at this big old picture up the top, the chord, which is that really, that is actually, that chord is almost the same as the curvature right there. So they're very, very similar. Um, but for, again, uh, small radii and larger data, that is not a true statement. So anyhow, that's why we can use the theorem in this problem is because, well, the radius is super, super duper large, 93 million miles. Uh, my advice to students here is when you're working on units that are that large, 93 million miles, um, well, normally I would say just leave this as 93 because then you're just saying, well, whatever answer I get in the end, uh, it'll be in millions of miles. But unfortunately, in this specific problem, they're asking us to, to uh, estimate the sun's diameter to the nearest 10,000 miles. So I am going to go ahead and write out a few zeros here because of the fact that we need to, uh, in the end, round to 10, 000, the nearest 10,000 miles. Now, the angle we're dealing with here, and I'm going to have to actually maybe mark it here. This angle was given to us in degrees and we don't want a degree angle. We want a radian angle. So if theta is equal to 0 0.5 degrees, we know we can trade out the one degree symbol for a pi over 180. Notice how I did that kind of faster this time around. So I'm going to go ahead and just use that um, I, because we're going to grab a calculator anyway, half of pi over 180, by the way, is pi over 360. So I'm going to say this is the same thing as pi over 360 radians. And now we have everything we need 
to estimate the sun's diameter. That's actually a pretty good uh, application of the arc length formula. And quickly grabbing a calculator, you find that this is going to be this many miles. However, we want to round to the nearest 10,000. And the reason why they probably want us to round to the nearest 10,000 is because that is a, an incredibly rough estimate of the angle the sun, the sun subtends. Gosh, I'm gonna do that a lot. Uh, anyway, that's a it's a very rough angle. So they're just uh, saying, hey, you know, this is, this is a pretty poor approximation. So rounding to the nearest 10,000, we have, uh, 81,000, or sorry, 81,000, 810,000. That's the nearest 10,000th place. We're rounding to that spot right there. And that's in miles. Now I'm very curious, uh, so I'm gonna pause the video and look up what the actual diameter of the sun is. And I just looked it up. It's roughly 865,000 miles. So we're not so far off in the big picture, I suppose. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty good, really good. Uh, estimation. Now, I, I was going to stop the video right here. However, I do know that um, there are a lot of up other ways you can use the arc length, not a lot of other ways, but a few other ways you can use the arc length formula. And unfortunately, the way I wrote my lecture, it only uses it one way. I give you a radius, I give you an angle, you find the arc length. However, it is, it can be work in many other ways, or a couple other ways. I can give you the arc length uh, and the radius, for example, and you can find the uh, angle. In that case, it's very, very simple because they would just say, well, if, you know, the arc length is 24 yards, meters, feet, whatever, and R is equal to, again, yards, meters, feet, whatever, uh, find uh, the angle in radians, right? Well. We know that theta, S equals R theta, or in other words, theta is equal to S over R, and so that would be 12 radians. So that style of problem, I don't even bother doing as a setup example, because it's really super simple. The other one that can be asked, I suppose, actually I know, is that they give you an arc length and an angle and ask you to find the corresponding radius is very, very similar So uh, to what we've been doing. So if they say the arc length is 24, let's just say meters, just to make our, our lives a little bit easier. And they tell us the angle is equal to, uh, uh, let's, let's make it actually kind of interesting. Let's say the angle is 3.2. So notice I didn't write it with a pi or any silliness like that, because again, in um, radians, you don't need everything to have a pi attached to it. It's just a number, that's all. So find uh, the radius. Oh, well, that's kind of easy again, because they've given us S, which is 24 meters. We're finding the radius and they've given us theta. So you would solve that, right? And by the way, there, there would be units on this. When you solve for R, you get 24 over 3.2 meters and that would be approximated using a calculator and i might as well do it I'm usually not into finishing out an example that's like this but this is exactly it's not roughly it's exactly 7.5 meters okay so that would be the radius another style of example that you could be asked i suppose is that if somebody asks, tells you oh i have an arc length of 24 meters going back to meters and they say, but the angle that it cuts out is 100 and uh, let's say 120 degrees. Let's just make our lives easy. So uh, find the radius. Again, this requires a little extra thought because you have to remember our formula here only works if theta is in radians. So you need to transfer, or better yet, transform that angle into radians and as radians this is going to be 2 pi over 3 I'll leave it to you to actually figure that out and then you would just go ahead and uh, solve our formula for r so r is equal to s over theta and then you would just plug that in 24 meters divided by uh, 2 pi over 3 and that would reduce uh, let's see 12 times 3 is 36 over pi meters 
Uh, let me make sure I did that. 12 times 3 is 36. Yeah, over pi meters. Uh, and then, of course, you could approximate that value. But those are different kinds of questions that could be asked uh, of your professor or um, of me if I am your professor. So uh, just know that. But all these problems are kind of the same breed. All right, I hope that helped out. I'll see you in the next video. It's the system of equations. We must deal with them all at once. Always looking for solutions. Positive outlook overcomes. Obstacles getting in our way comes. Effects more than we can sometimes see. Things for what they are and work together until you feel at peace. Listen close. Don't talk too much. That isn't kosher. Really hurt inside, it doesn't justify you to speak too loud and cry.